Senator Feinstein, thanks for taking the time to join You're us welcome. today. Happy to do it. In last night's presidential debate, they talked about military budget cuts. Here in San Diego, major cuts to our military could hurt us as one in five jobs are directly or indirectly uh, rely on federal spending. What is your stand on future military spending? Well, let me, let me speak to, to it this way. If sequester goes through, California is the big loser. It's estimated we would lose 220,000 jobs, of which 137,000 are military. Uh, George Mason University has done this study. Um, we have that study and we can make it available if you'd like to see it. Uh, having said that, um, there is no question uh, but that San Diego is a city that's hurt and I'm aware of this and that's why I think sequester is a terrible idea and we have to prevent it and we have to prevent meat ax cuts. And so what I've proposed is that we do we keep the tax cuts under $250,000. The first $250,000 of somebody's income has the tax cuts. Above that, it does not have the tax cuts. We embrace the formula of Bull Simpson, which is the long-term deficit reduction plan combined with tax reform. And we do one half of sequester. That changes what is a $109 billion cut across the board into a $55 billion cut. But we don't do it by meat ax, we do it by scalpel. And that would give each of the appropriation committees the opportunity to look at your portfolio. If the defense committee would look at this, they would have an amount they would cut and they would use discretion in how to cut it. And um, I think that's the best option there. All oh, right. In these definitive cuts, you were saying use a scalpel instead. How would you be able to maintain Medicare and Social Security while staying within those budget cuts? Well, Medicare and Social Security are not part of sequester. This is one of the things that was part of the agreement made earlier in the year, um, which uh, I think uh, needs to be looked at. I mean, I think for the purpose of sequester, it's fine. It, for the purpose of Bull Simpson is long term. You can make adjustments to programs without affecting people now on the program. For example, you can, it, it's not a lot, but it's something. You can increase the age a month, a year for Medicare, uh, which uh, doesn't affect anybody presently on Medicare, most likely. The San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station has been offline. You're well aware of this since January due to a small radiation leak. Southern California Edison wants to restart it, at least one uh, unit, on lower power. Do you have any concerns about restarting uh, that one uh, reactor unit? I have followed this as closely as I can. Uh, I've been there twice. Uh, I've met with all of the staff. I've met with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's uh, members. Uh, I've met with the head of the commission. Um, I've met with the CEO of the company, Ted Craver, who has kept me really up to date. Uh, what uh, Southern California Edison is asking to do is start up the one reactor at 70 percent for five months and then shut it down and evaluate those few um, dents or ruptures in the steam generator that have been plugged. This is really up to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, P P uh, Pacific, um, Southern California Edison, excuse me, will not proceed and cannot proceed without the specific assent of the NRC. And the NRC up to this point has not given that assent. And from a statement, you've been in close contact with them throughout this process since January through the testing and, and you're relying on, yes. on those uh, yes. correspondence. Yeah, I, I have a lot of concern about these steam generators. They were faulty to begin with. And I think there is a big liability issue with the manufacturer. That doesn't solve the problem, however. And the problem is really a technical one. And that is whether plugging works. And that has to be decided by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I do not believe that the commission would make a judgment that 
did not have safety at its first and only priority. Okay. Um, moving on to another issue about San Diego's future, there are 6,000 farms in San Diego County, which surprises a lot of yes, people. Yes, I know. So some would say that water is one of the most important yes. issues we face in our future. Uh, your opponent, uh, Elizabeth Emkin, says there's too many state regulations for uh, fair water distribution. Do you agree with her, and how would you improve California's water delivery and storage systems? Well, I have no clue what she means about that. Uh, but I can tell you what I have been trying to do. I've tried to work very closely with many entities, including uh, San Diego, including the farm community, including um, the big deliverers of water like the Metropolitan Water District. And um, I believe that we have to build um, more storage uh, for water from the wet years to hold that water for the dry years. California is becoming a drier state. It's just fact. Uh, rain is less frequent. Um, snowpack is estimated to disappear by the end of the century. It is vital that we be able to hold water. It is vital that be, we be able to get desal, desalination, to a point where by acre foot it is commercially viable. And Poseidon here has a project, and that is moving along, and I have supported that project. The problem with it is it's expensive, and um, he, the key is to get the acre foot cost of desal water down. Another thing we have been working on is the ability to transfer water, to move water around, which is the prudent thing to do. But our infrastructure, our water infrastructure was built when we were a state of 16 million people, we're now 37 million people going on to 38 million people, and we've got the same water infrastructure. So it seems to me the addition of storage, at ground storage uh, of water from wet years is really most important. We've talked about a lot of issues here today, but I do want to bring up this. You were recently quoted in the San Francisco Chronicle as saying, quote, you think your greatest strength is finding solution where there is opposing sides. You've been called a bridge builder by both uh, sides of the aisle. What is the most pressing issue, if you could name one partisan issue that you would like to build a bridge for and solve if you were reelected? It's immigration reform. I really believe that. That's one of them. I wouldn't say it's the most partisan. Well, it is the most partisan, that's no question. But uh, cybersecurity is another one. Um, cybersecurity is partisan. That's yeah, something that you need to yes, sort of. Yes. Uh, we did not have 60 votes to move ahead with a cybersecurity bill, which is vital to the security of this nation. And um, uh, we're trying right now with the part of the bill that I had something to do with, which is the uh, information sharing part, to work with the House Intelligence Committee to see if we can make it more to their liking and then pick up some votes in the process. And what about immigration, briefly? Well, immigration, we have a very broken immigration system. And um, I've had a bill for 10 years now uh, to bring farm labor a consistent supply of labor. The fact of the matter is, it's all undocumented. And it's not unskilled, it's skilled. But the only people who will do this work are those who are undocumented. And um, I've had a devil of a time to get it through. So I am very hopeful that there will be a breakthrough, that we will be able to pass that, that we will be able to take the people that live in the shadows today and bring them out of the shadows and give them a workability in terms of some form, it wouldn't be a green card originally, but some form of card that allows them to work legally in this country. Okay, is there anything you would like to tell San Diegans in particular? Well, I would like to tell San Diegans what a great city you have. I mean, I remember as a small child coming here and the only thing was El Cortez Hotel on a little hill, and then there was virtually nothing except nondescript buildings around it. It is now turning into quite a beautiful metropolis. I think um, your wharf, I think the ships, I think the Navy ship that's been converted 
to be used, you know, for public, um, with a restaurant and tours. Um, I think uh, the ballpark is beautifully sited. I think your convention center, your downtown is built up. I think it's got some of the best architecture in the state. So I'm very jealous because I'm a San Franciscan. And um, I've always thought San Francisco was graced by God with the most beauty, but San Francisco needs some work. <laughs> and um, I, I think, you know, San Diego is really, uh, is really, and the other thing here is people are sitting down and are compromising and are negotiating and groups are coming together to solve problems. All right, Senator Dianne Feinstein, thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks so much. Thank you.